So I've been messing around with World Machine recently in Godot, and I uh, this is a video showing off my pipeline to be able to get uh, terrains imported from World Machine into Godot. Um, this method uses a couple of custom shaders and a couple of custom scripts to be able to import uh, uh, and kind of compress the uh, data downwards so it can be properly displayed in the Terrain 3D plugin that um, is freely available. So if you don't know what World Machine is, World Machine is a program that instead of using brushes to be able to create a terrain and sculpt it, it uses procedurally generated uh, sections. It's, it's more visual. So you can see here, um, the, yeah, uh, you've got an advanced parallel and going into the terrace, going to a height output, and this is what you get up here. So here's an example of a more quickly put together terrain. Uh, you can see all these different uh, nodes are working together to be able to create uh, something like this. And right now it's rendering at low resolution such that I don't have to wait ages to be able to <laughs> show you this, but uh, uh, you can see that once it goes through Godot, it becomes way more put together. So the way I like to put these together is such that at the end here, you have all my selected outputs that I need to be able to actually output into Godot for further processing. It doesn't just come raw out of this and then you can go straight into Godot. It needs to be processed even further when you're in Godot. So the system I use to render these terrains is a free plugin by Tokusen Games, if that, I don't know if that's how you pronounce it, uh, called Terrain 3D. Uh, you can see its GitHub page here. I'll put the links in the description. Uh, they have a whole entire massive uh, documentation available here uh, that goes through all the data. I won't cover the more advanced topics uh, that I use to be able to actually get this to work. Specifically, the control map format. Uh, was very useful uh, when trying to compress this down in a shader. Uh, but y everything that I have learnt has been from this documentation, as well as the two videos they provide on their YouTube channel. So I do recommend that you go through and watch those videos before proceeding with this method. Especially if you're me and you're trying to rewatch this to be able to relearn how you did this. So in Godot, the plugin actually has an importer, which is very important for how this works. So in, here in the importer, as you can see, I've already imported one of my terrains um, that is pretty simple uh, and a pretty small one. But this technique works up to a, what, 4,000 by 4,000 terrain? That's 4 kilometers by 4 kilometers. I think I've gotten to work with 8, 8K by 8K, but at that point, World Machine really starts to hate you. So uh, your mileage may vary. So this importer expects a height file, a control file, and a color file. The height file for one is just an R16. Um, this you, you, you get from any other software as well. Um, in World Machine itself, it's just this one here. It's just the height output. You can literally just output this as a raw 16, and that just you can just plug that in perfectly. The uh, color file is more technical. Well, the control file is more technical. The color files are just a color file. So um, I found that their internal shader that they use for this just multiplies the color. Uh, other than the height file and the color file, you also it's expects a control file, and the control file is... Um, kind of hard to wrap your head around. That's why I recommend you look at the documentation. Uh, the control file is just, can be treated as just a texture. All the information of the base texture, what is overlaid of the texture, how much it's blended between the two, how, whether or not there's a hole there, navigation, auto shader, that is all actually just kind of compressed into a single number for each one of those pixels. So a regular image, you can imagine, has a red, a green, a blue, and an alpha channel. This image that is the control map only has a single number, and that single number it has all the information compressed into it. So basically how the method that I use is that I take some key uh, information from my, uh, from my World Machine file. Like for example, I generate this texture here, which is a splat texture. So this splat texture, for example, for the terrain you just saw, so for this, this terrain here, it would have its own splat texture where here represents grass, here represents uh, this leaf color, here represents sand, and so on. And actually that's it right here. So this texture I've imported into my own separate scene. So this is the importer that comes with Terrain 3D. This is my own one called Terrain Compute. And basically it's just a script that um, puts this into a compute shader to be able to compress all the information about the splat texture back into a control file that I can then use to put back into the importer. So the pipeline goes like this. I start in World Machine, I create all the information I need, all the splat maps and all that. I import it into Godot, where I use my uh, terrain compute shader to be able to take that um, material texture, 
and turn it back into a file that I need, which I export to here. This is then used in the importer in the control file name. Exact same. And then I hit import. And it creates the island right there. So for example, if I get rid of this, this is already set up in the background. So if I just go import, it just imports it. So from the top, I'll create, um, I'll use wall machine to create a piece of terrain so I can show you exactly how this, this goes from start to finish. Okay, so uh, that took about, I don't know, half an hour, I guess. And so this is what I've got. Um, uh, it's kind of hard to tell, but uh, this is generally what the it will look like when it's in Godot, but it will look rather different. What we're aiming for is uh, just the correct splat output, the correct texture, height map, all that. So all those I have taken the liberty of outputting to this folder here, which is nice and neatly inside of my Godot folder for this um, specific project that I'm going to, that I'm importing this into. Uh, so the ones that are important are these ones. So you have the splat texture. This one shows exactly, you know, what uh, material going to be in, on that position. Over here we got the texture. So this is, um, the reason why this is all washed out and white and such is because, um, like I said before, the material that's the shader that is used for the terrain 3D stuff is all uh, just multiplicative. So in, this needs to be a very white color for, for it to actually not just make everything look horribly black. Even this is probably will make the terrain much more darker than it needs to be. But this is where a lot of the information about like, you know, flow channels is really like important. And you'll see this in the final render uh, in Godot that uh, these lines really show up really nicely as like, evidence of like how water flows down the terrain. Um, uh, you can also see that over here is transparent. Uh, the reason for that is Terrain 3D makes transparent uh, wet. Well, you know, they, they lower the roughness enough that it looks wet. And since this is an island I'm going for here, um, I've just cut off this area and made it like that. This here is uh, unimportant for this tutorial, but um, this is just how I'm generating trees on this terrain. So I've just taken in using the same approach that I have in World Machine for the rest of this data, I basically just um, used a macro to be able to select, you know, the heights that I want, the how, like, not to put it in the, like, uh, not to put it in crevices, and then I just combine that all together and not on slopes. And eventually down the line I get, like, a big array of just dots, and those dots I go through in Godot, and on each of those dots I spawn a tree. Like, nice and simple stuff. This isn't really a tutorial on how to use uh, World Machine. Uh, if anybody is interested in that, um, please post a comment and I'll be able to uh, go through like how I individually do these things. But this, if you don't know how to use World Machine, I, I suggest looking up a few tutorials. Uh, they'll explain it way better than I can. And I'm, I'm, I'm a pretty novice as well. Like uh, this is incredibly messy and probably is really, uh, every time I have to like render this, it takes takes a while if like this isn't already built. So. Uh, I can, I definitely can be improved here. So please uh, look at some tutorials and look at the example files if you ever use uh, World Machine. It gives you some pretty good stuff. So now that we're in Godot, we need to set up my terrain compute shader. So uh, I'll, I'll show you what this script looks like. So this, this script is very messy because uh, I didn't really plan on showing anybody this, but uh, in a nutshell, what it does is it takes an image uh, in this case, what is the plat splat texture? Puts it into a pipeline for sending off to a uh, shader, compute shader, um, and then yeah, that's basically it. And so, and then it just receives that, and then outputs this image using one of the buffers. The actual compute shader itself. You can tell I really didn't really want to show any of this to anybody because this is dumb shader. <laughs> but this dumb shader, basically, what it does is so what the shader does is for every single one of these, like let's say. Uh, each, this program runs for every single one of these pixels and even each one of those pixels, it goes, all right, how close am I to the index of colors that I've input to say that these are the material? For, so for example, this, this one right here is green. So, and I know that is very pretty close 
to the Godot, the color that I put into Godot over here as green. So therefore, it's going to output green onto that spot. Again, I'm not really going into detail as to how this actually works. If, if anybody wants the code or anything, just let me know and I'll, I'll post it. But otherwise, it's more just a showcase of uh, what it can do. So anyway, back in Godot, let's load up our uh, splats. There it is, tutorial splat, there it is. Uh, we make sure that we get the right dimensions. In this case, it's a 2048 by 2048 one. I want to output it to the right place, so I'm just going to go tutorial. I'm going to call it uh, tutorial data. All right, and so now we need to pick the right colors for it. So I'll open up the texture and I'll just color pick the exact spots. So this is probably off screen for you, but um, I'm just color picking exactly the right colors that uh, I wanted to imitate. So for stone, I want it brown, grass, I want it green, and so on. And these colors here, they represent uh, the material that I have in my texture list for my actual terrain. So over here, in the texture list that I have, the first one is brown. Brown represents stone. Stone I have is the first rock, well, rock on the texture list. And then I have my grass, my sand, my uh, gravel, and then I've got uh, my leaf cover. And so you go stone, grass, sand, gravel, leaf color. And so it's just as easy as that. So this texture is going to translate it. It's going to output a separate file up to here. That is the control data for my import. So I can go play. All right, that's good. So that would have done it already. So, and then I'm going to go back to the importer. I'm going to go and select the control file that I've just created. In this case, it would be in my terrain data tutorial, here it is, tutorial data.exr, that's what I've just created. So I'll make sure to select the correct height data as well as the, the correct color data. Sorry about how messy all this is, sorry about that. There you go. And we'll go import and hopefully this works. Oh, make sure that's set to the correct scale. There we go. And there you are, it has been imported correctly. So you see, uh, there are some issues. Uh, for one, uh, why is this gravel like horribly green? <laughs> uh, well, that is because of the way that I have created the texture. So um, this uh, original uh, texture that I'm using, Obviously for the gravel areas, I'm using this way too green color. So I can go back into World Machine, I can edit that. I can go through and make sure that this doesn't actually show up as green. And so this texture doesn't end up looking like this. Uh, whatever, for now we'll just carry on as if this, just pretend this doesn't actually just look like snow on the side of this mountain. So before going anywhere, I'm gonna make sure to save this to the correct files. So personally, I don't choose to set the texture list. Text list I share between all my terrains, it just makes it easier for everything. Uh, but the storage and material I save as unique for this. So I can move to a actual scene. And this actual scene actually has all my stuff here. And I've, it looks like I've already made a mistake here. Like I've accidentally put this leaf cover over the grass and you can see this in the splat, right? So all this was technically supposed to be where trees are gonna spawn, but uh, that's not the case. So yeah. Um, if I grab my water and make sure to adjust it to the right scale, which matches my world machine stuff. Eh, right about there. That's probably about right. And we hit play. And I adjust it because I've accidentally put the player well below the floor. <laughs> and you see, just like that, I'm now on my terrain. Now you might be wondering, why is there a bunch of floating trees? And that's because of the next part, which I haven't done yet, and I'll show you how to do, well, what I do now to be able to import these. But the trees themselves, um, I'm also using as an import from uh, this. So that extra thing that I had, the tutorial cover, .png, this shows where each individual tree is gonna be spawned. So I've got a separate script set up for that. So I've got a separate scene set up, and this, scene, uh, this one, uh, similar to my terrain compute scene, basically just takes the uh, cover texture that I want, in this case, 
it will be the tutorial texture. Tutorial cover.png. Uh, that's the correct one, that's good. And what I'm gonna do is I'm saving it just to position and then uh, at runtime, it's just gonna spawn, spawn all those trees in. Uh, don't think about it too hard. There, there is a lot of optimization behind it, but basically it just works. So back to my actual scene. You can see all the trees are in the correct position now. Which works pretty well. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, the snotty gravel is probably a little bit uh, rough. <laughs> sorry, sorry, it looks like that. Oh well. But you can see the uh, terrain splatting works uh, pretty well, like, uh, with the terrain cover. So basically the, um, the EXR that we save when we import the splat texture uh, finds, like, this, so, like, this pixel on the splat texture would be somewhere between stone and somewhere between grass. And so it sets it to stone as the bottom, and it says grass on top, and then it sets a blend amount between the two based on how close it was to this color and how close it was to that color. That's basically how that works. So same here, it's like it's blending between the grass and the leaf cover. It's very easy. Now as a as a show off, I'm going to get this full screen and I will turn on the dev texture, oh, sorry, dev camera so you can see all this. You can see we've got some issues here. <laughs> uh, for one, the terrain is way too dark and we got uh, trees on the floor because I didn't set it up correctly. But these are the kind of things where you just go back and you tweak it and then you come back and eventually you get something good. So this is an example of another island I've done with this exact same uh, formula. Uh, it, it's, this one looks a little bit better, like we don't have snot on the floor. <laughs> and the trees are a little bit more appropriate. You can see them all billboarding like this. Um, but yeah, with this technique, I can get some pretty decent texture splatting for like no work whatsoever. I think that's really what the benefit of this situation is. If I go into the actual data itself and I show you exactly how this looks uh, in the debug, I can show you what the control texture looks like. So the control blends, you can see how it's like blending nicely between the two. Yeah, and so on. So like this, of course, means gravel, but this means stone. And then up here we got grass, but it's kind of mixing between the two. And then like this is the blend that's forcing between. Generally, the the compute shader is just doing all this behind the scenes, and so I don't have to think about it at all. Especially doing it manually would would suck. Anyway, yeah, that's my pipeline. Uh, thanks for watching. And uh, if you have any questions about uh, uh, the way this is done, any specifics about the control texture, like setting up the compute shader, just leave a comment and I'll make a video about it. Thanks. Bye.